Welcome. In this video, we're going to show you some of the key advantages that Pro Landscape Planner has over the Earthscapes Designer program. One of the fundamental differences between the two programs is that Earthscapes is built on top of another design program called the uh, Corel Draw Designer Suite. Okay, the advantage that Pro Landscape has here is that it is built from the ground up as being a landscape design program. So the tools that you're going to see in the program are going to be very landscape specific tools and they're oriented to be able to do uh, estimating from the plans very, very quickly. Now an example of, of this is if we go up here to the draw menu, you're going to see we have very specific tools to draw specific entities like the property line tool. When I draw the property line, it knows that property line goes on the property line layer and uh, it has a, a certain line type. Okay, a foundation wall, same thing. I, I have the, it goes on my wall layer and it, it knows that the foundation wall by default will be six inches wide at scale. And if I uh, draw a roof, I can, I can just click on the roof tool and add a roof very easily to a foundation. I have paver tools here, uh, so I have different types of uh, paver uh, shapes that I can do uh, with the paver tools. Okay, if I go in and I select my edging tool, I have uh, various edging tools here. Okay, I also have irrigation tools. On the annotation menu, I have text tools to add text to the drawing. If I want to do call outs uh, to label my uh, plants and my, uh, my areas, I can do that very easily here. I have dimension lines that we can add very easily. I can also do a title block. Uh, I have uh, uh, many different uh, tools here to choose from. Okay, now another uh, commonly used toolbar is this one here on the far right side of the program. This is what we call our EasyScape toolbar. And it's some of the same tools that we just mentioned up here in the draw menu, but since we use them so frequently, we're going to uh, put them on this toolbar. Okay, so the property line tool, if I select that, I'm going to go in quickly and plot in a property line like so. Okay, and then I'll get back here and you'll see here that it tells me the distance and the angle that I've, I've traveled uh, from that previous point. Okay, and because I use the property line tool, it automatically knew to use the uh, dot dash line there and it also uh, did a, a red color on that so it, it, it will uh, be intelligent enough to, to do uh, the entity with the, the correct line styles and, and colors. Okay, now if I choose the foundation wall tool, I'll go in and just quickly uh, rough in a, a foundation wall like so. Okay, okay, so there's my foundation wall. If I want to add a roof to it, I can simply select the roof tool and add a roof tool to it just like that. I'm going to go ahead and delete that one for now. Okay, now let's go ahead and create a, an edged area so we can uh, add a, a bed. So to do this, I'm going to use the edging tool located here. Okay, now with the edging tool, I have various line styles that I can use. If I want a straight line or a polyline, I can select that up here in the toolbar. Or if I want a spline or a fitted curve, we can do that. So I'll select an open spline. Okay, and here I'm just going to start my edging here, and I'll just go ahead and wind that around a little bit like so, and bring it back to the foundation wall like so. Okay, now if I want to know information about this, I can do that pretty easily. Now up here in the toolbar, we've selected brick edging. Okay, if I need to change that, I can do that on the fly if I want to. Okay, now if we right click on that edging and go to info, it tells me that I have uh, about 28 linear feet of edging uh, when I've drawn that in there. It also automatically puts that on the, the edging layer and it's keeping track of the material. So here is my brick edging. So when I do an estimate, it's going to take that over to the estimate. Now, let's go ahead and add mulch to that area. So I'll select my mulch fill tool. I click on this area. It traces that curve out nicely. Okay, now the mulch material, you can change that up here in the uh, edit bar and we can 
we can select from a variety of different mulches. So I'll just select the cypress mulch. Okay, I can also change the depth. So the uh, default depth here is three inches. Now, if I look at the info on this, we'll go over and select info. It tells me that I have 79 square feet, which calculates out to 0.73 cubic yards of mulch needed to fill in that area. Okay, it automatically uh, placed that on the mulch layer, so we didn't have to really think about that. So it's keeping track of all this information as we do it. So it's making that estimating job much, much easier. For the symbols that we have, uh, you'll find the symbol libraries here over on the right side of the program. The first one is the favorites tab. This is where you're going to be placing your commonly used plant materials. Okay. Now the next tab over, this is our symbol tab where you're going to see the bulk of the symbols uh, here in the symbol library. Okay. Now you'll see here that I have the evergreen broadleaf shrub category selected. Okay, and I have a, a variety of different categories and subcategories. So if I were to go into the deciduous trees, it's going to load the deciduous tree library. Now if I stretch that out, you're going to see that there are literally hundreds of uh, symbols uh, within here. Now when you purchase the Pro Landscape program, right out of the box, the symbols are already set up for you. You don't have to assign symbols uh, for all of the uh, the different varieties of trees. These are uh, basically all the maple trees that we have uh, in the library. So it's a pretty good selection of maple trees, but uh, there are hundreds of other uh, items uh, within the library. Now this may be too many uh, uh, for uh, you to choose from. So uh, if you have a commonly used item that you want to add to the library, you simply right click on it and select Add to Favorites. And when you do that, it's going to show up over here in your favorites tab for your commonly used plant materials. Okay. Also, uh, the number of items, it can be overwhelming since we do have so many different symbols in here. So it's a good idea uh, to set your climate zone when you're using the program. Now with Earthscapes, you can use uh, either a north or south plants, uh, but it's not going to allow you to select a specific climate zone like you can do in Pro Landscape. So to select a climate zone, we go into Tools and Climate Zone, and then you can just uncheck all of the ones that are outside of your area, and you only check your zone. And then what you'll see in the library here is only those plants that grow within your zone. So if you, say, select a zone 4, you're not going to see zones 1 through 3 or 5 through 10. You're only going to see the zone 4 items. Let's go ahead and drag that over like so. Now all of the symbols here, you can add your own symbols, you you can customize the symbols, you can switch out the uh, the design of the symbols, you can resize the symbols, recolor them, you can do a lot of different things with Pro Landscape uh, Planner here. Okay, so uh, I'm going to work from the favorites and I'll simply uh, drag a tree over here like so. Now when we place the item, it's placing it at the mature size. So you'll see here that this uh, this particular tree has a, a mature size of about 20 feet, so I'll probably want to uh, place that away from the foundation, quite a ways away from the foundation, so it doesn't grow too closely to the foundation there. Also, uh, we can come in and we can we can place uh, symbols like so, just rubber stamp them like that, okay? And I'll go ahead and place a, a couple flowers under here like so, okay? Now with the program when we place those it's placing it at the mature size it doesn't have anything to do with the planting size the way the symbol looks it's at the mature size so if we want to note how large the planting size is on this plan what we can do is we can right click on the item and go down to select size you'll see here what is the default size on this particular tree is a two inch caliber but if I want to select a 10 gallon tree I can just right click on it and select 10 gallon and now when I place that on an estimate it's going to use the 10 gallon tree so I've done a, a, a quick plan for you here and uh, let's say we want to do an estimate on this plan very very easy with Pro Landscape because we we're letting the program calculate everything for us because we've used the correct drawing tools, we've used 
uh, the symbols over here uh, from the library and we're letting the program do a lot of the work for us. So to create an estimate, I'm going to click on this Create Instant Customer Proposal, save the drawing, okay, and I can select a customer or I can add a new customer here, okay. When I click OK, I get a series of reports. Okay, I get a cover page here. Okay, I get a, a project detail report which has all of the items that were on that plan listed here. Okay, I get a material list. Okay, I get plant information reports on every item on that plan which is going to detail um, all the characteristics, the climate zones, uh, if, if you have a, a good general description down here, uh, that, that will uh, uh, come right out of the database. Now, in the database, uh, normally this uh, care information field is left blank. That's something you can go in and customize uh, and put your own care information since that may vary by region. Also, all of these fields are also customizable, so if you, if you find that you need to change any of these fields, you can do that pretty easily within our database. So let's go ahead and close that. And then uh, this is the estimate. So uh, it estimated the uh, brick edging at 29 linear feet. And the daylilies, it gave me four of those. The black mulch, it gave me uh, 73 or 0.73 cubic yards. And the boxwoods, uh, I've got three of those. And then the apple service berry, I've got one of those. Um, and you'll, as you'll remember, I changed the size on that to a 10 gallon. So it did keep track of that size for me. Okay. Now everything in the database when we ship the program has a $5 price tag, so don't let that scare you because you will need to go in and set your, your pricing, your local pricing on uh, the items uh, that you use within the database and it will keep track of that so you won't have to keep doing that each time. Uh, it will maintain your pricing uh, within the database. Okay, let me go ahead and jump back uh, over to the CAD program. Now, one of the fundamental differences between the programs is the way that the programs handle the scale of the drawing. Now, whenever you start a drawing with the uh, Earthscapes uh, designer, you start by selecting a drawing template and in that template you have a paper size selected and then that paper size also has a scale uh, which when you're drawing it's drawing at that scale so everything is fine as long as you keep that scale and don't need to change that scale if you need to change that scale or the paper size then you're going to have to recalibrate the entire drawing which can be a little bit tedious with Pro Landscape when we do this the program it's keeping track of our scale we can change our scale on the fly at any time it's going to maintain that calibration at all times okay now one thing that we can do to demonstrate this is I'm going to go ahead and drop a dimension on the paper here like so okay so this property that I've drawn in here it's 145 feet wide or deep okay now the paper size that I originally started with was an 8.5 by 11 size. If I go in and I want to change it to a different paper size, such as an Architectural D 24 by 36, I click on that, it puts it on a larger page, but it maintains that 145 foot length. Okay, so if you try that with the designer, uh, then it's going to throw that out of calibration and you'll have to recalibrate your entire drawing. Okay, now with this one uh, you'll see here it doesn't take up much of the page uh, since I you know I have it at a 1 16th inch scale as you'll see here. Now if I wanted to change the scale I come up and I just change the scale up here okay and when I do that you know it blew it up off the page but still it maintained it at 145 feet long so this the scale is still calibrated alright now what we can do uh, to simplify things is we can also let the program figure out what the scale needs to be to fit on that paper size so again it's at a, at a architectural D 24 by 36 inch size here we have a button it's auto scale drawing it lets the program figure out what the optimal scale is. So I click on that and it fits it to the page, 
gives me just a tiny bit of margin there. The optimal scale is one in or one half inch equals one foot. Okay. Now it doesn't leave a lot of extra room for uh, uh, legends and title blocks. So if I want, I can I can uh, tweak that just a little bit, which we'll show you that here shortly. Okay. All right. Next, what we're going to do is jump into a uh, nearly completed drawing. So I'll just go in and open that up like so. Now this drawing has oh gosh, uh, it has over a hundred items on here. It's a hundred plants. It has uh, uh, probably about two hundred boulders on this drawing. Uh, uh, so if I wanted to create a legend. Uh, the program is going to make it very easy to create a legend based on this plan. If you were to create a legend in Earthscapes, uh, you basically would have to go in and manually count your items and manually type in uh, the labels into a, a, a uh, I'm sorry, type in the text into a table uh, to apply to your drawing. So it's a very tedious process. Okay, so with Pro Landscape, we've made it very very simple because remember the uh, items are linked into the database and the program is keeping track of an awful lot of information for us here. To create a legend, I have this legend tool here. I'm going to draw a legend. Uh, I have different options that I can choose here. If I want the common or botanical name, we can choose that. If I want to number the symbols, we can do that. I'm just going to keep it pretty basic here because I have a lot of different uh, symbols uh, and I don't want a, a, a cluttered legend, so I'll just go ahead and leave this like this and I'll click OK. Okay, and now that gave me a legend, like so. Now if I uh, scroll in there, you'll see that it, it broke it up within uh, categories and it also gave me uh, the counts of each of those uh, plants uh, within my plan. Okay, now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, move that off the page just a little bit, like so. And then I'm going to use that auto scale drawing once again, and it fits the legend on the page and it keeps that drawing on the page. Okay, so let's go ahead and move it once again and auto scale it again to recenter it. Okay, now if I want to apply something like a title block with Pro Landscape, we can do these things at any time. So to apply a title block, I have a title block tool right here. I select that. And it gives me this wizard where I can select a variety of different title blocks. Okay, I'll select, uh, I'll just select one of them here like so. And then I'll click next. If I want to put the project name, the draftsman, uh, my company name, I can do that. I'll just click next there and next. And then it applies a title block to the edge of the drawing. Now if I don't really like that title block and I want something else, I just select the title block tool again select a different one. Now, let's see here. Next, 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 and it applies the new title block. Okay, so it makes it very easy to uh, do title blocks. Another thing that we can do here that Earthscapes does in, in some respects, what you can do is you can add a, uh, a render effect to your symbols. With Earthscapes you basically do them one at a time. Uh, and apply a filter to them, whereas with Pro Landscape, uh, you can do them uh, as a automated uh, process. And if we go up here to the top tool bar, you'll see that we have these symbols up here. And this is the regular CAD symbol mode, where when you look at a CAD symbol, you'll see um, you know the lines of the CAD symbol. So it's basically line art. Um, but if we select a different rendering mode, such as the hand-drawn mode, it changes, simultaneously changes all of those symbols uh, to that render style. We also have a pastel style. Okay, here's the watercolor, the photorealistic colored pencil, stylized, pencil sketch, and the blended watercolor. Okay, so you can add style pretty easily uh, when you use the uh, the rendering modes. Here. Okay, now one other uh, thing that I would like to mention 
is uh, the ability for uh, Pro Landscape to add hatch patterns. So uh, whenever we have a, an item such as a paver and we want to add a hatch pattern, we can do that very easily here. So I'm just going to draw a rectangular paver area like so. Okay. Now it, it comes with a default hatch pattern, Okay, but we, what we can do here is we can choose uh, a different hatch pattern. And we have about uh, well, over 400 uh, different hatch patterns to choose from. Uh, so we have quite a variety here. So you just go to the one you want. So here's the uh, herringbone 6x9 rounded. Okay, so when I zoom in on that you can see that better. Okay, now we can also easily change the hatch scale. So to change a hatch scale, we simply go up here uh, to where the paint bucket is in the, in the hatch uh, pattern. Right next to that is the scale of that pattern, which it's currently at a scale of 5. If I change that to a scale of 15, it makes the, uh, the pattern larger. If I change it to, say, a, a 3, it makes the pattern more dense. Okay. So, uh, you know, we can, we can change the density of those hatch patterns. We can choose from a huge variety of pat hatch patterns. Uh, we also have color fills, so if I want to uh, change this to a gradient fill, we can do that very easily um, uh, just by uh, choosing uh, the gradient tool. We have several gradient styles that we can, we can choose here. So, to add color, uh, hatch patterns, uh, very, very simple with Pro Landscape. You can do uh, similar things with the Earthscape's uh, designer. However, you are uh, limited uh, to um, oh, under 100 uh, hatch patterns, and uh, you, you do have a, a large variety of fill patterns that you can use uh, with uh, the Earthscape's product as well. Okay, I hope this uh, video has been informative, and I think that you, uh, if you use the uh, Pro Landscape, you'll see that the the design time uh, should go uh, uh, way up. You should uh, be able to to uh, create your drawings much faster, and uh, you'll have a lot more options with Pro Landscape as far as doing estimating. It's going to make your estimating uh, much much easier uh, if you're integrating the uh, the Pro Landscape Planner and Proposal all-in-one. Uh, you'll see that there are uh, literally hundreds of features uh, in the uh, Pro Landscape program that you just don't get in the Earthscape product.